so I'm going to start this off by saying rest in peace to Kobe Bryant and his daughters and um, to all the other passengers that lost their lives in the helicopter crash. Um, I wanted to try to talk myself through how I've been feeling about it because it has impacted me in a way that uh, most celebrity or athlete deaths haven't, you know, like, I, um, I'm trying to figure out why, because I feel like it's like that for a lot of people. I've been looking at, you know, I can't look at too much social media, because it's just, uh, you know, it's just heavy, man. Um, but I've been seeing that a lot, you know, and I've been trying to figure out what it is about this one that, uh, just resonates differently and um, one of the things I, w I was thinking is Kobe Bryant's legacy I mean it's that we've watched him he's a true legend you know like he really is a legend like we know especially in the basketball community like I don't know if you guys know but I played basketball but I came up in that era right at like and I'm from I'm from Jersey he's from Philly I know all the places that he played he he played in Jersey while he was in high school um, you know, and it's not like I knew him. I don't know him. I never met him. Um, never had a conversation with him. But he was a big inspiration to me in my life on the court and off the court. I mean, and I think, I think it's that, that message of, and it's not just a message with him. It's how he lived his life. It's like you could see the determination. You could see the focus and the willpower and the, and the just never say die and the by any means necessary, and and the uh, you could just see his will to win in every game he played. He played both ends of the floor. He he did not want to lose. He did not accept failure. He did not accept the losing. He always worked on his game, no matter how good he was. And he preached those things. He made it okay to be confident. He made it okay to demand excellence of yourself and those around you. He made that like he. You could see, like, you know, he wasn't always the, the nicest guy on the court. And um, you, you understood that with him. Like, he, he did that because he wanted to win. And um, that translates to everything. You know, he, he came up with the phrase Mamba mentality. But, and, 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 you know, you see a lot of people talking about how the Mamba mentality has affected them. But he lived that way. You know, if you, and if you were paying attention... You couldn't help but be inspired by that. So, so what, I, the reason I think, one of the reasons I think that, you know, it's hitting people so hard is because, if like for me, I'll just speak for me. One of the reasons it's hitting me so hard is he was always a, a standard, a, a bar. It's like, you know, I, used, I would look at like what he ran his uh, mile time in high school and I'd try to beat it. He said he ran two miles every day before he went to the gym. I started doing that. Like, what he did, I tried to do. I, I would put up shots. I, you know, we, we, we shoot 500 shots a day. And I think well, Kobe, would, Kobe might shoot 700. Let me put some more shots up. It was always this little motivation in the back of your head. Like, well, Kobe might go a little bit harder. You know, all these, all these mythological stories about him just staying in the gym longer than opponents so they wouldn't see him quit. Like, all these, all these things, he, you know... The shooting with the with the with the hurt tendon, the the fighting through injuries, the there's so many stories and and, and it gets into your psyche and, and he becomes like a you know a motivating factor and and like a hero, like a real life hero to a lot of people, you know, like it just seemed um, you know he seemed like he had the will to do anything and when you see a tragedy like that happen to him. It makes the uh, uncertainty of life, the impermanence of life, the fragility of life, it makes it so much more crystal clear um, to see somebody that you looked up to uh, in, in some form um, going like that. And I think that's part of the reason that we've all been struggling with it. Because it just didn't seem like that way, you know, that he wasn't that guy, you know. You know, to add on top of that, you know, his daughter, who we were watching, and 
she was gonna, you know, she was she was following in the footsteps, and to see the bond that they had. That's the that's the hardest part, because he had successfully transitioned from being an athlete to being a, a father and a public father, you know, a successful black male role model, showing us how to do it the right way. I mean, even this accent was was brought about because he was trying to you know make sure that make sure that his daughter would be at the gym on time. You know, he didn't want to get stuck in traffic. But when you look at the clips of them. He, like even when he won championships, even when um, he won gold medals, MVP awards, it, and I don't know him, but he just seemed so much more content. And that was interesting to me as a competitor and as a young man to watch somebody who I looked up to transitioning his life into another phase, into accepting this role and, and making it seem like fun to be a dad, making it seem like fun to to build a family and to, to pass on these, like, it looked like he was having fun with it. I could tell, you know, just from those clips and, and how much he poured into his daughter's teams. Um, and that's why, you know, it, it's, it's heart-wrenching for a lot of us, I think. Um, you know, I'm just trying to navigate why, why it feels like, why it feels different. Um, I can't imagine how his wife or how the families of the other um, victims of this tragedy feel. I won't even pretend to, I can't even begin to fathom that. Um, their grief journey is going to be long. Um, but, you know, I... Uh, I hope that the support that they get from, you know, all their family, friends, and fans will uh, help them to uh, make it through that. Um, and us as as fans of uh, of Kobe, I think that um, if there's anything if there if there's anything that I'm taking from it is um, You gotta really, you gotta really cherish what you got. You gotta really value your time. You know, nothing, no matter how many, no matter how many resources, how much resources you have, no matter how many. You know, tomorrow's not promised for anybody. Next conversation is not promised. You really gotta make the best of the now. You gotta live in the present moment and really feel it. Um, it's funny. I was a. Uh, planning on doing a Saturday Night Chakra last weekend because I want to do one every two weeks but I did I shot it but I just didn't like how it felt and what I was saying was when's the last time you really smiled and felt happiness fully and I I feel like this um that ties in with this like I think that we really need to find more joy I think so many of us get lost in you know the responsibilities of life and and uh, the work of life, but we forget to have joy. We forget to feel that joy, and I, I think that um, I, what I really want to do, and I know it's it's um, virtually impossible if if you're affected by this situation, but we, in, in the coming days, I want you know if you're watching this, I want you to really think about smiling with your whole heart, with your whole soul, just for being alive, just for being having the people around you that care about you, for uh, you know. Being able to go outside, being able to smell some good food, taste some good food, being able to see a sunrise or a sunset, being able to hear some good music. I mean, there's so many things to be grateful for, and I think that this is just another reminder, a very unfortunate reminder, that you have to do it now. You gotta be grateful now. You gotta enjoy it now. I mean, of course, we're gonna work for tomorrow to be better. I'm never going to say that, you know, it's not about settling for what it is, but it's about being grateful for what it is, you know, because it could be gone. And um, personally, as I say, you know, Kobe was a, a big role model for me as he was for many others. Um, in my basketball journey and in my life journey, just watching, you know, how he moved and um, his presence clearly is going to be, you know, his impact is global. And... Um, he left the legacy, the legacy he left will be um, remembered in a positive light. Um, he, I think that the most overwhelming thing that people are taking away is 
how motivating he was and how inspirational he was and um, really what you can do when you put the work in because he was all about putting the work in. I mean, yeah, he was a guy-given natural athlete, but that's not what made him great. What made him great was the attention to detail, the footwork, the, the willingness to work out coming in, into the season in, in great shape. Um, that's, that's what put him over the top. That's what moved him past so many others. Every year he got better. Every year he got better. Um, and I think that's why he resonates with so many people. No, because everybody can work hard. Everybody can work hard. I did want to mention that, yes, I wore the number 24, but I wore 24 while he was wearing 8, all right? I, I was wearing 24 first. That's what I want to say. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so let, let's, uh, let's try to smile. Let's work hard every day and uh, let's really be grateful for the moments we have with the people we have around us. And let's keep building for a better tomorrow, but let's be grateful for what we're doing right now. That's all we got. Vroom.